All right, here we're going to be looking at the cash provided by operations here for the cash flow statement using the indirect cash flow method by making adjustments here to net income. And we're going to look at uh, this change in cash here in terms of the accounting equation where assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. And I've got the assets broken down here between cash and other assets. So looking at our uh, equation here where the change in cash provided by operations with these adjustments to net income would be done here in terms of this equation here where the change in cash plus the change in other assets equals our liabilities plus stockholders equity and I rearrange this equation here so the change in cash equals and moving this uh, other assets over to the other side of the equation here you get a minus other assets plus liabilities plus uh, stockholders equity here. So we're going to be looking here at this ca cash provided by operations in terms of this accounting equation here that we arranged. Okay to determine our cash provided by operations we're going to have to convert our NIN income over here from the accrual to the cash basis. So we're going to start with our net income and then we're going to subtract out any non-cash revenues and add back any non-cash expenses. And then we're going to have to also look here at the cash that must be included in our net income adjustments. And we're going to be doing that for our operating assets and liabilities. Plus we're going to also have to take care of our non-operating revenues and expenses as well. And we're going to do that in terms of this uh, equation here where the change in cash equals minus the change in other assets plus the change in liabilities plus the change in stockholders equity. All right, looking at our non-cash revenues, that we'd be subtracting here from our net income. So looking at the liability side of the equation here, that would be a deferred liability, or in this case, an unearned revenue. That's where we'd be receiving cash ahead of any revenue recognized here as part of net income. So let's say we had an increase here of the unearned revenue here of $6,000 during the year. Well, we would increase our unearned revenue by that amount and then also increase our cash amount by that amount. And then for the case here where we'd have a reduction of $5,000 here in that unearned revenue, we'd reduce our unearned revenue by that amount and then we'd recognize it here as a non-cash revenue as part of net income. Now going down to an accounting equation here, uh, this change in liabilities is represented here by the unearned revenue and that's a direct translation over to change in cash. So we had a six, plus $6,000 amount here, that translates over to a plus $6,000 amount here in the change of cash. And then for a mi minus $5,000 amount here, that translates over directly to a minus $5,000 amount here in cash. Now looking here on the asset side of the equation, uh, that's where we have our accounts receivable. So we would recognize any accounts receivable, uh, recognize any revenue of it ahead of any cash received. So in the case here we had an increase of $50,000 during the year in this accounts receivable, we'd increase that by $50,000 here our accounts receivable and then we'd recognize that here as a non-cash revenue. Now in the case here where we had a reduction of $10,000 here in our accounts receivable, we'd reduce that accounts receivable by that amount and then we would increase our cash by that $10,000. So we'd receive the cash here. Go going over here to our um, accounting equation here. Now remember this arithmetic change. We're subtracting any change in other assets and the other assets here would be these accounts receivable. So a $50,000 uh, plus amount here in the accounts receivable or other assets translates over to a minus $50,000 here. And a minus $10,000 here in the other assets translates over to a plus $10,000 here. So we would total our change in cash here for the uh, change in liabilities plus the change here in the other assets here. And whatever that total amount is here, we would adjust our net income by that amount. So we start out with an accrual amount here in net income and then we add in any of that cash change and then that would equal to our net income on the cash basis. So using the example here where we had a hundred thousand begin with a hundred thousand dollar accrual amount then we added this minus thirty nine thousand dollars in here and we ended up with a net income on the cash basis of sixty sixty one thousand dollars. For our non-cash expenses, we would 
add that back to our net income. So looking here on our liability side of the equation, that would be for our payables. And in this case, let's use an accounts payable here. This is where we're recognizing the expense over here ahead of any cash paid. So in the case here, we would have a $15,000 increase during the year. We'd recognize that as 15000 an increase in our accounts payable by $15,000. And then we'd recognize that same amount here as a non-cash expense of $15,000 on our net income. Now in the case here where we had a reduction during the year, let's say of $25,000, we would reduce our accounts payable by $25,000. And then we would also reduce uh, that cash paid amount here, our cash account by 25000 So looking here at our uh, accounting equation here, our change in liabilities, which is recognized, uh, represented here by our accounts payable account, a direct translation over here to the change in cash. So a plus amount of 15000 here translates over to a plus amount of $15,000 here in the change of cash. A minus $25,000 here in the change in liabilities translates over to a minus $25,000 here. Now looking at our inventory or our asset side of the equation, which would be our inventory and prepaid expenses, we would be paying for those inventories or prepaid as expenses with cash before the expense is recognized here as part of net income. So where we had a $20,000 increase for the year, we'd increase our inventory account by that amount and we reduce our cash for that amount. Now where we had a $12,000 reduction here for the year, we'd reduce our inventory by that $12,000 amount and then we'd recognize it as a non-cash expense over here of $12,000. Now going to our accounting equation, now remember here we uh, subtract, due to arithmetic we'd be subtracting that change here in other assets or that would be our inventory account here or a prepaid expense account here. So a $20,000 uh, change in our inventory here uh, due to the arithmetic would be a minus change here $20,000 in cash. And then a minus $12,000 amount here would be a uh, plus $12,000 amount here in the change in cash. So we would total this cash amount here, the change in cash, and that was due to our change in liabilities and our change here in other assets or that inventory account here. So we'd be starting with our net income and we'd adjust it by the change in cash here. So let's look at the example here where we have our net income on an accrual basis. We'd add that to our, but add the change in cash to it and that would equal our net income on our cash basis. So the case here where we had $100,000 of accrual on net income, we'd add that change in cash here of a minus 18,000 to it and we'd end up with a net income on the cash basis of $82,000. Okay, to summarize, any changes in cash that are not included as part income are shown here in our accounting equation. So we had an increase in cash here. It shows up here as a positive uh, change in cash in our accounting equation. And any revenues that were included as part of our net income are reduced or subtracted here in our accounting equation. Any reduction in cash or cash paid that is not included as part of our net income are shown up here as a negative change in cash in our accounting equation. And any expenditures here that were included as part of net income are added back here in our accounting equation. So that would there would be a positive change in cash in our accounting equation. We also have to make adjustments for our non-operating assets and liabilities to our net income. And those would include like the amortization, the depreciation and depletion, unearned revenues and so forth. So if we're looking here at any revenues as part of net income, any increases would be subtracted from net income and any decreases in revenues would be added back to net income. And looking here at our expenses, any increases in our expenses to net income would be subtracted from net income. Any decreases here in expenses uh, would be added back to net income.